Namaste. Let us uh, begin today's class. Uh, we will do the uh, the initial prayers followed by the uh, Shanti Patha as we discussed last week. Uh, and then I think from next week on I would like to switch back to the 8 o'clock class and I'll tell you more about that later but let us do uh, Shruti Smriti followed by the uh, Shanti Patha and here the Sahana Vavatu will be number two uh, not in the very beginning so let me turn the audio on and then we'll begin Om Shruti Smriti Purana Nam Alayam Karunalayam Namami Bhagavat Padam Shankaram Loka Shankaram Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badarayanam Sutra Bhashya Kritau Vande Bhagavantau Punaf Punaha Ishvaro Guru Ratmeti Murti Bhed Vibhagine Vyoma Vatyapta Dehaya Takshina Murta Yenamaha Gukaras Tvandhakaro Vai Rukaras Tvannivartakaha Andhakara Nirodhitvat Guru Ritya Vidhiyate Sadashiva Samaram Bham Shankaracharya Madhyamam Asmadacharya Pariyantam Vande Guru Paramparam. So we'll do it together um, and uh, you can practice it. I think you pretty much know it. Shanno Mitra Shamvarunaha Shanno Bhavat Varyama Shanna Indro Brihaspatihi Shanno Vishnu Rukramaha Namo Brahmane Namaste Vayo Tvameva Pratyaksham Brahmasi Tvameva Pratyaksham Brahma Vadishyami Ritam Vadishyami Satyam Vadishyami Tanmam Avatu Tad Vaktaram Avatu Avatu Maam Avatu Vaktaram Om Shanti 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 Sahana Vavatu Sahanao Bhunaktu Sahaviryankara Vabahai Tejasvinavadhitamastuma Vidvishabahai Om Shanti 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 Yaschandasamrishabho Vishwarupaha Chando Bhyodhamrita Aat Sambabhuva Samendro medhaya aspranotu Amritasya devadhara no bhuyasam Shariram me vicharshanam Jihva me madhumattama Karna abhyam <coughs> Bhuri vishruvam Brahman of koshosi medhaya pihitaha Shutam me gopaya Om shan Tishanti Shanti Aham Rikshas Yare Riva Kirtif Krishtam Gire Riva Urdhva Pavitro Bajini was from Ritamasmi Dravina Gumsa Marchasam Sumedha Amritokshitaha Itirth Shankor Veda Nuvachanam Om Shanti 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 Purna madaf, purna midam, purna at, purna mudachate, purna sya purna madaya purna meva vashishyate, om shanti 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 hi. Apyayantu mamangani, vak pranas chakshu shrotramatho balomindriyani chasarvani, Sarvam Brahma Upanishadam, Maham Brahma Nira Kuryam, Mama Brahma Nira Karot, Anira Karanamastu, Anira Karanam Me Astu, Tadatmani Nirate Upanishad Sudharma, 
ते मयि सन्तु ते मयि सन्तु ओम शान्ति 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 वां मे मनसि प्रतिष्ठिता मनो मे वाचि प्रतिष्ठितम आवीरावीरम एधि वेदस्य म आनी इस्थः श्रुतम मे मा प्रहासीहि अनेनादितेन अहो रात्रान् संदधामि ऋतम वदिष्यामि सत्यम वदिष्यामि तन्मामवतु तद्वक्तारमवतु अवतु माम अवतु वक्तारम अवतु वक्तारम ओम शान्ति 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 ही भद्रम नो अपिवातय मनः ओम शान्ति 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 ही भद्रन करने भी हिशुनु याम देवा भद्रम पश्चेम अक्षभिर्यजत्रा स्थिरै रंगै स्तुष्टुवागुम सस्तनु भी वैशेम देवहितन यदायु स्वस्तिन इंद्रो वृद्धश्रवा स्वस्तिन पूषा विश्ववेदा स्वस्तिन स्तार्क्षो अरिष्टनेमि स्वस्तिनो ब्रिहस्पतिर दधातु ओम शान्ति 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 ही यो ब्रह्मानं विदधाति पूर्वम यो वै वेदांश्च प्रहिनोति तस्मै तम हगु तम हग देवमात्म बुद्धि प्रकाशम मुमुक्षुर्वै शरणहम प्रपत्ये ओम शान्ति 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 ही so <coughs> let us begin by chanting verses karika verses uh, 45 through the end of uh, the chapter which is 48 so let us chant 45 through 48 so uh, i will uh, repeat it uh, once so you can you can uh, you can also uh, uh, chant it uh, after I've chanted it once. Na swadayet sukham tatra nissangah pragyaya bhavet. Na swadayet sukham tatra nissangah pragyaya bhavet. Nischalam nischaras chittam eki kuriyat prayatnataha. Nishchalam nishcharas chittam eki kuriyat prayatnata Yada naliyate chittam nacha vikshipyate punaha Yada naliyate chittam nacha vikshipyate punaha Anir 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 aningam sorry aninganam anabhyasam nishpannam brahmatattada Aninganam anabhasam nishpannam brahmatattada Swastham shantam sanirvanam akathyatam sukham uttamam Saswastham shantam sanirvanam akathyatam akathyam sorry akathyam sukham uttamam ajamajena gyeyena Sarvagyam parichakshate Ajam ajena gyeyena Sarvagyam parichakshate Nakaschit jayate jeevaha Sambhabosyana vidyate Nakaschit jayate jeevaha Sambhabosyana vidyate Etat uttamam satyam Yatra kinchit na jayate Etat tad uttamam satyam Yatra kinchit na jayate Alright Hopefully you will be able to see the board better even though I am on the corners piece so to speak of We will continue to make some adjustments but I think this is the best that we are doing with uh, doing at the moment 
<coughs> so just a word about uh, the next uh, few classes before we begin. So today we will actually be, uh, finish the third chapter, uh, the Advaita Prakaranam, and uh, also revise the Advaita Prakaranam uh, today. I think we have a lot to do. And then from next week on, we will begin with the la last chapter of the Karika Alat Shanti Prakaranam. And hopefully we'll be able to do uh, fairly quickly. I'll try. Um, I have made some decisions about the next text to take based on all of your inputs back. Um, and then uh, I will announce it at the appropriate time. So uh, we will already have something lined up uh, in terms of the next uh, next text that we will take. Uh, then to reiterate, and I will send it to you as an email, um, I think we will begin uh, the morning class at 8 o'clock, back to what it used to be. And I think what we'll do is we will do uh, uh, the 108 names of Dakshinamurti or meditation, or perhaps a couple of other things so possibly. And we'll begin at 8 o'clock itself. And the precise beginning of the Karika may not be exactly at 8.30. It could be a little bit earlier. And the reason being that I would like to finish along with question and answers by about 9.40. They'll give me a chance to just take a break and then set up the camera for the next class. So, so just in summary, the next class will be from 8 o'clock really. Uh, I hope all of you are there. If you are, if you want to join a little bit late, it's up to you. But uh, we'll start at 8 o'clock and end at 9. Um, the specific upaya that we need to employ in our lives to finish this task of gaining moksha in this life itself. This is not a... Um, uh, not a um, easy thing to do. I was reading uh, Swami Maheshanandji's commentary on the 11th chapter of Panchadashi, uh, which talks about ananda, the gaining of, uh, of joy in our life. Well, hopefully we'll come to that some point in time. And uh, he was uh, pointing out that Let me see. He was pointing out the important verse from the Mandukya Karika number 41 that we just finished doing um, maybe a week ago. Utseka Udayet Udayer Udadher Yadvat. Sorry. Utseka Udadher Udadher Yadvat. Kusha Agrenaka Bunduna. This was the thing that he was talking about. And what he was saying, and this is related to the uh, uh, to the upaya that I'm talking about, is that one of the issues that he has seen which obstructs people from uh, really finishing up this task, because it's a project, it's a task. Uh, starting with Shravanam, Mananam, Nididhyasanam, it's a task, it's a process. So he was saying that I find that there is one thing that people miss on and they do not complete this project in this life itself and thereby postponing it to the next life. And what is that? He says they are too impatient. Too impatient. So this is talked about at various places and again came up in, um, in the Panchadashi chapter that we were studying in the obtaining of Ananda. And so this word called Dhiraha, Dhairyam, Dhirata was talked about within this reference. So what he was discussing there was, and he made a reference to this verse number 41, that uh, Gaudapada Charyaji also says you should be just as patient as the bird was in trying to 
dry up the whole ocean one bindu at a time, one drop at a time. Yeah, that's that's just a way of talking. Is not possible, literally not possible. But what he was saying was, um, I'll just spend a minute or so on that before we go back to there's lots to be covered, so I don't want to get distracted too much. So he was saying, what I find is that there's quite a bit to say about this, really. Um, that people get impatient. And one of the things that um, is important in this endeavor is the blessing of Ishwara. Now this has to be understood. What do you mean by blessing of Ishwara? So there is the there is a prayatna, there is an effort on our part. That is, this is what we've been discussing and I think the uh, the effort is really here in verse number 43 also. Uh, you know, dosha darshanam abhyasa, we'll talk about more about that in a minute. So the prayatna is there. But when you get the results, do not depend on you. You cannot say, I... I I think I am going to gain moksha in a certain certain time. I, that was a mistake that I also made when I went to the uh, two and a half year course with Swamiji. Um, I still remember discussing this with many of my fellow students. He says, my goal is that in two and a half years I am going to gain moksha. This is complete foolishness as I have discovered later on in my life. and. Um, it's not that easy and it's not that quick. The reason is that you do the effort, the karma, but the karma phala data has to decide when you are done or not. So you have to wait for Ishwara's anugraha to say how my attitude is. You keep doing and keep doing it with a lot of patience, so much patience that Gaudapadacharya, as he says, Kusha Agrena Eka Binduna. This is how much this is how much patience you require. So I thought I'd just talk about that a little bit. Anyway, so go back to verse number 43. As we saw that uh, the two specific uh, methods of internalizing this teaching through Shravana and Marnana are that even when you are having fun Vaishayika Sukham outside pleasures even when you are doing it you should continue to remind yourself don't get lost in it <coughs> Have the pleasure, but don't get lost in it. Keep a distance away from saying this is going to end soon. And really speaking, I'm going to be back again facing myself. And uh, and this is this pleasure which is based on Vishaya Sukham is, is full of defects. So as I mentioned, I corrected it this time. Not Dukha Dorsh Darshanam, but Dosha Darshanam, Pandita Lakshanam. So he says, your Lakshana should be to see as you are, this is kind of like I was telling you about the editor who is reviewing a, a submission of an article and uh, he may be enjoying the article. They are saying, wow, well, good job, wonderful, yeah, very good. The same time it says in the on, on on the margins, he's making notes and saying, this is not clear, uh, this is not there, this should be changed, I like that. So similarly, uh, the advice given in, in this is that as you are enjoying, it's like reading an article, you should be aware of the defects of the article, of the pleasure. This is number one. And the second one is that please make a habit of invoking the truth 
about the Mahima, the very glory of the Paramatma. And until you do, it's not going to become very uh, prevalent uh, in your life. So that is the uh, method that is being asked to do uh, for us. And then um, in going to verse number 44, I'm going, I'm not going to go word for word. Uh, you can read that yourself. But in verse number 44, laye sambodhayet chittam vikshiptam shamayet punaha sakashayam vijaniyat sampraptam na chalayet. So, um, it is talked about the fact, again, uh, broadly speaking, there are two sadhanas for gaining uh, nishtha. Nishtha meaning your abiding in your own ananda. And there are two main sadhana. Just another way of looking at what we have also been talking about. One of course is Jnana Abhyasa. So the Jnana Abhyasa is the same as we just finished doing in uh, in the end of uh, Abhyasa. So this Abhyasa is Jnana Abhyasa. That I won't say anything more than that. And the second one is Vairagya, which we have talked about many times before. The Vairagya means that you should narrow the gap between what you think and what you do. Don't get uh, upset about the fact that uh, there is a gap. Initially there is a gap. No doubt about it. There's no use uh, um, no use to cry about the fact that you know I, I, I understand what it is all about but I'm not able to live it. It's not the right way to look at it. The right way is, as we talked about in a couple of classes last week, you don't know really at this point in time. You've been told something and it's like, uh, this is what Swami TV was talking about when he was here, the, the difference between information and knowledge. You're getting some information. You have to convert that into your own knowledge. And so don't keep on saying, I know. I just have to put it into practice. This is the wrong way to look at it. What it is, is I don't know yet fully because my knowledge is full of doubts. And until I narrow this gap between what I do and what I think and when I speak, I am not going to be fully involved and fully in nishtha. Therefore, the Vairagya means that you now have to turn your attention from useless things in life to something about yourself which is the most useful thing you can do. Swami Maheshananji was talking about this. He says, you know, he says, I find that teaching Vedanta to, uh, this is really the difference between teaching it to householders and teaching it to sannyasis. Very beautiful example. <coughs> he was saying that if you teach Vedanta to householders, and by the way, in the entire history of, uh, of India, the teaching of uh, Vedanta to householders has been withheld back. Uh, some of the um, uh, Shankaracharyas, for example, won't even do it. Uh, we are greatly indebted to Swami Chinmanandji that really revived. It's not that it was completely dead, but there is a stigma of teaching Vedanta to uh, the householders. And this is the reason. Swami Maheshananji says that if you teach Vedanta to a householder, they understand it wrongly. How do they understand it wrongly? What they say is, okay, I understand that everything is Brahman. Swamiji, I've been listening to you and uh, that makes sense. 
Everything is Brahman. So now it doesn't matter what I do. If I do some bad things also, that is Brahman, which is I do some good things, that's also Brahman. Swamiji says, I hold my head and says, my gosh, is this what I wanted to tell you? No. No. And so, teaching Vedanta in which desires of life are still extremely active is useless. In fact, it can have the opposite effect as this was saying. That because everything is Brahman anyway, so why not, can I, why should I be vegetarian? Doesn't make any difference to me. I am different from uh, what my body is and what my mind is. So if I eat uh, uh, beef, so what, what's the big problem? You have to accompany Jnanam with Vairagya. You have to slowly see your, your progress towards the knowledge, reducing the gap between what you know and what you do. This is all of our individual jobs and it has to be done uh, slowly, uh, surely, with lots of patience. So anyway, so that's what, uh, let's see, is there anything else that I wanted to say? Yeah, very, uh, very, sh in a very quick manner, I won't spend much time on it. So the Shastras also say that apart from uh, <clears throat> what would be called pravritti and nivritti, I think will come up in the Gita class also, that both pravritti means that headlong going into activity in life and nivritti means shying away from it, not doing much and also uh, you know just doing yoga and so on and so forth. Both of them really do not help. What helps is Atma Jnanam and Atma Vichara. And so as doing the Atma Jnanam and Atma Vichara there is another state that you have to be careful about. This is what is called Kashaya. And so Kashaya means that you are just happy with yourself. You have discovered that I don't have to do a lot of things. I'm just happy with myself. Of course, that is desirable. But happiness without inquiring the nature of happiness, inquiring about the very process where Ananda is reflected, all of that, that self-inquiry, unless you take that, just lying there doing nothing and just be happy with yourself also is a defect. This is called Kashaya. So here, um, apart from uh, from Pravritti and Nivritti, a Shastra uh, gives us a caution uh, because what will happen is, you know, you can ask, so what is wrong with that? I'm happy with myself. Well, the problem is that the seeds of ignorance have not yet been roasted, so they will sprout up again. But right now you are happy. Well, I'll talk about that in a minute. But one thing before we do, uh, please note the technical uh, deriv derivation of the word chittam. So chittam means uh, the Sakshi, pure awareness, is called Chit. It's called Chit. This is the Atma. The reflection of the Atma in the human being or any being, and if it's a living being, then it has a Antakarana. The thoughts in the Antakarana are called Chittam. So the word Chittam is derived from Chit, where the Takara indicates reflection. In the sense that if you are uh, looking at yourself in the mirror, you as the Bimba, in that sense only, it could be called chit, but your reflection is called chittam. 
So similarly here also, the Atma is the Chit and the human being uh, is has Chitta. Okay, just make a note of, of the technical aspects of it. Okay. So let's look at the uh, what the verse is uh, unfolding and then I'll give you some commentary on it. No, he says, so this is a summary verse. It's nothing absolutely new, but it's just summarizing. So he says, therefore, na aswadayet sukham. Actually, it brings up something new that hasn't been completely talked out before, but it's not, uh, it's not totally new. It's related to what was said before. So he says that as you withdraw from being involved with outside things in your life and you begin to enjoy a sukham which is based on some knowledge of the Atma. So, na aswadayet sukham tatra. Okay, then what happens is and this is where I am just going to interrupt the explanation of this verse to give you a background on this so that then we will go and complete this verse in a minute. So here's what happened to me. I'll tell you about my life. When I met Swami Chinmananji in 1973, seventh chapter of the Gita, I was just amazed. Oh my goodness, this is what we are all searching for. The Atma and just the in, just a clear explanation of that. This is even before I met Swami Dayananji. This is all from this. I'm very, very indebted to Swami Chinmanand. Really, he's the one who initially introduced me to this. And I remember my life so well that I was just on a cloud nine and the whole world changed for me in terms of how I looked at things and what my behavior was and I was very happy I was really high and I was struggling not to, ex to make a big deal with others internally I was very high why? Because we uh, we are uh, back on life anyway i think that we will wind up we will not be able to finish uh, the everything that we wanted to do so at least uh, finish this verse so what i was saying was that uh, this is exactly what uh, gaudapada acharya ji is saying that listen you can you can feel yourself being very happy, much happier than before, independently. But this is not it. You still have to, you have to understand the word Asangaha. And I, just to give you another uh, historical fact, I remember when Swami Dhananji would have uh, the meditations on Asangaha. I kind of understood what it is, but never really uh, never really completely grasped it and so I knew that I had some work to do and sure enough the uh, the initial happiness slowly withered away and I had to rediscover it and so this is what this verse is saying now I can relate to it he says na aswadayet sukham tatra nissangaha pragyaya bhave so you have to really understand through not only jnana but pragyaya, prakarshena jnana, absolutely clear, sakshat karanam. It takes a while and I now get glimpses of that sakshat karanam. Still has not become a nishthai. This is a lifelong kind of a thing. But the whole process is very well explained. This is very nicely done. If you do that, then nischalam nischarab chittam eki kuryat prayatnataha. And I won't go into the uh, uh, 
into the details of it. Uh, Swami Maheshanandji where he has closely followed Adi Shankara's Bhashya on this Karika. And there uh, Adi Shankara says, and we actually did this, you remember the five different portions of, five different stages of the development of life when we did on uh, uh, January 1st. So this was exactly like that. And so basically what it said was that uh, first you will you will get an introduction to it, then it becomes paroksha jnanam, then it becomes aparoksha jnanam, but adridam aparoksha jnanam. Adridam aparoksha means not really dridham. It comes and goes. And then through abhyasa, you have to make into dridham aparoksha jnanam. So that takes quite a while and uh, that is what uh, what is being talked about in the second line nishchalam nishcharam chittam eki kuriya prayatnata so that is number 45 we can actually pretty much finish this uh, uh, this chapter 46 really is just a summary of the previous verses Yadana liyate chittam nacha vikshipyate punaha aningam ana anabhasam nishpannam brahma tadatadada. And uh, also in number 47, uh, similar to that, is that now uh, the distinction between what is to be known and what, what you are, the knower and the known. The distinction is over. It all becomes one. And uh, so now you are swastham, swatasiddham. You are just in your own glory. You're not dependent on anything or whatsoever. No happenings, no experience, no memory, no fears. You are complete without any 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 kind of a condition to to uh, to sully it for you and uh, this kind of uh, of ananda is something which is unique you cannot describe it uh, if somebody says uh, is it like this is it like that you'll say no uh, the acharyas and Swami Meshananji and really a lot of the other acharyas give the very similar example that when a young a uh, woman, let's say, gets married and has a sexual relationship with her with her husband, and her friends all say, "Well, um, she feels very happy because this was something completely different from all the other experiences." And they say, "What is it like?" And so the the experience of a sexual uh, experience is uh, something completely unique, different from others. Similar to that is the ex the, the the ananda of the jnana and jnanam becoming one. You, in fact, you are you understand exactly what Ishvara is all about. That Ishvara is nothing other than you. The jiva disappears; only Ishvara remains. And that ananda is indescribable, akatyam. And the other part to be talked about here is, and and this is absolutely true in the experience, you don't find that this is something brand new. That it was born, it was never there before. You don't find that. You don't have that attitude. What you find is that you had glimpses of it before, but it was interrupted. This is the experience that you get. This is what is called Ajam and Sarvagyam. So here in the Sarvagyam, Swami Maheshananji explains it as both Anantam and Advaitam. Both, both of them is nearly uh, applied. It is unlimited and un, uh, unhindered because the only hindrance will come from something which is not you from Dvaita. Here that thing has been removed because everything else is a lower level of reality. You alone are. 
this is the culmination of the Advaitam. And so in uh, 48 it simply says, it completes the chapter, summarizes the beginning, uh, and uh, it just says that really speaking,